Hi, this is John Sowash, and I'm excited to introduce you to a new feature coming to Google Forms, Classroom, and Chromebooks. Uh, this feature was mentioned quite a while ago by Google. Back in June, they announced this feature, and uh, as of today, it is now available in beta testing. Um, the feature I'm talking about is locked quizzes for Google Forms. Um, I know that as a teacher myself, I did use Google Forms in the classroom as an assessment tool, but I was always a little bit apprehensive about using it for uh, bigger, more important assessments because it was not a 100% secure testing solution. Um, students can browse the web, access um, other resources during the quiz. There wasn't a great way to lock it down. Now, Chromebooks are wonderful testing devices. Your school probably uses Chromebooks for NWEA testing, uh, Smarter Balance testing, something like that. And it is possible to establish a secure testing setup with a Chromebook. Google's done some behind the scenes work to make that same secure testing situation and bring it into uh, Google Forms. So I'm gonna do a quick demo of this feature and then we'll talk about the details, how to set it up, how to get it, and what you'll need in order to uh, take full advantage of this. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Um, right now I'm logged in, this is a Chromebooks, an Acer Chromebase, um, and I'm logged in as a student currently. So you know, behind the scenes, I created a quiz using Google Forms. Um, I uh, have a, a Google Classroom set up right here that the student is in and so I've assigned this to the student and right here just says Chromebook Quiz and so as a student I'm going to go now click on it and we'll see the new secure testing uh, situation. So the first thing you'll notice is that uh, we have a new kind of splash screen or welcome screen so instead of going right to the form we now have this um, introduction page where it says Chromebook quiz locked mode is on. Now it has a couple of interesting uh, points in here that I want to uh, mention. It says once you start this quiz you won't be able to open tabs or applications. That's the secure part of this. To avoid losing any work in other tabs make sure to save before you begin. All your tabs will reload after you submit this quiz. Now this is an important thing because you know I've got several other tabs open here um, and once we click the start quiz button, everything's going to go away and then when we exit the secure quiz, the tabs will come back but they're going to reload. So it basically kind of freezes them, hides them and then brings them back later on. So if students were working in some other application, it's important that they save their work and close it. You should be fine if you're using any Google products, you know, Google um, Docs, Slides, Sheets, those save automatically. But if you're in some other tool, um, you just want to make sure that you save and close those things before you begin. So let's go ahead and, uh, and start. So I'm going to click Start Quiz and you're going to notice all the navigation is going to disappear as soon as I click Start Quiz. So here we go. It's going to take a second and um, we're off. So we're loading the quiz. We know all the navigation is gone. I have no shelf on the bottom. All I have is the actual quiz content itself. Um, and so this is the secure aspect uh, of the quiz. Now there's a couple of interesting things that uh, um, also take place. I've done extensive testing and playing around trying to break this um, and just test the limits of it. Um, so I'm going to try to do a screenshot. So control um, and press the switcher button. And you'll see down here in the corner that it says uh, screenshots disabled. So I cannot take a screenshot. I can't save this quiz in, uh, in any way. So that's a new feature. Um, another thing that uh, you notice if I right click on anywhere in the form, all of the uh, menu options have been disabled. I can't copy, paste, view source, um, everything is gone. So any extensions that were installed where you can access them through the right click menu, those have been disabled as well. So it really does lock it down uh, quite tight. The only way to exit the secure quiz environment is to either submit the form or to click close quiz up here in the top right corner. Now there is an additional feature I discovered as well. If you click close quiz, it's gonna warn you, say are you sure you wanna do this? Um, and so one of the things that this has added, if a student opens the quiz, looks at the content and then closes it, an email is now sent to the teacher, the owner of the form, saying that so-and-so has opened uh, a secured quiz but did not submit it and actually says the student's email address there. This is another way that teachers can prevent students from looking at the content of, a, of an assessment, 
closing it, studying that material, and then uh, taking it when it's officially time. Um, so that's a new feature. Google Forms did not do that um, previously. So I'm going to cancel that. Um, no features are available other than uh, you know what you see here, with one exception. Um, if you have students with um, IEPs who require various accommodations, the accessibility tools of Chromebooks are still available uh, during this quiz. So, uh, for example, I've got a, um, a free response question down here at the bottom. Um, I can use the new Chromebook dictation uh, feature to dictate my response to this question rather than typing it in. The trick is that because we're in the secure mode and we don't have any navigation, the only way to enable those accessibility features is through the keyboard shortcuts. So uh, I know a couple of them uh, by memory. For dictation, you have to press the search key and then the letter D for dictation. My favorite Chrome app is Screencastify, exclamation point. And so there you can see the dictation um, has worked. So you need to make sure that your students are aware of those keyboard shortcuts if uh, they're going to take advantage of that, those tools. The other one um, that you can use is the uh, select to speak, um, which allows uh, the, the student to have the text read to them. Um, now the keyboard shortcut for that is the search button plus uh, then you drag to highlight uh, some text. I've been having trouble with this one. Um, for whatever reason, if I start a secure quiz and then go out of it, it, it seems to lock itself. Um, and so you have to kind of turn off uh, select to speak and then turn it back on. So it's not working at the moment. Um, this is in beta testing, so um, they're still working out some of the bugs. Um, high contrast mode, uh, screen zoom, those features are available as well. So those are all um, built in. So that's the basics of the student experience, you know, what happens when they take a locked um, quiz. I'm going to go ahead and exit this and uh, we'll talk about the, uh, the teacher end of things. Now, it's very important that you understand that as of today, I'm recording this December 6th, 2018. As of today, this whole locked quiz uh, feature is in beta testing. So I have signed up to be a beta tester, um, and so I have early access to this. You will not see the features that I'm about to show you until this feature is enabled for your account and your school district as well. Um, Google has a pretty consistent track record of making these features publicly available somewhere between four to six weeks after the beta testing program begins. That was true over the summer with uh, some of the new Google Classroom updates. I anticipate, uh, this is pure speculation by me, I anticipate that by early January 2019, um, these features will be widely available to everyone. Um, I do have a detailed blog post with all the features that I'm going to show you. Um, and you can also sign up to be a beta tester if you uh, don't want to wait till uh, it's publicly available. Um, if you head over to my website, chrmbook.com slash locked quiz, um, you'll be able to see that blog post with links to all the different uh, uh, resources uh, that I'm going to share. But let me walk you through this from a teacher's point of view. What does it take to enable locked quiz mode um, for your assessments? So I'm actually going to go to um, Google Drive, and uh, you'd start here either by um, opening an existing Google Form that you have already created, or creating a new Google Form. It's totally up to you. This is fully compatible with uh, forms that were created prior to the rollout of this new feature. So you'll do that. Um, I'm gonna, I've got one open here. So this is my regular old form, nothing fancy here. Um, then I'm gonna go into the form settings. So you're gonna click the gear up in the top right corner and um, go to the quiz tab. So general presentation quizzes. And you'll see a bunch of options. Um, currently, because again, I'm a beta tester, I have this new locked mode on Chromebooks. It does have the beta um, label on there. And literally the only thing that is required to make this possible, or turn this on, is to check that box. Once you check the box, locked quiz mode is now uh, ready and fully available. Um, 
couple of uh, things to note, uh, when you enable locked quiz mode, it is going to adjust and lock a few settings. So it will automatically collect student email addresses. It's going to restrict the form availability to only within your school domain as well. Um, and limit the students to one response. So you cannot adjust those settings uh, once locked quiz mode is turned on. This does have some implications for classroom teachers. If uh, you are using Google Forms uh, as a mastery um, assessment and students can take a quiz as many times as they want until they reach the mastery uh, score that you've set, this feature is not going to work for you. Um, if you are teaching in uh, a situation where you have students from multiple school districts um, in your class, it's going to be a little bit trickier to use this. Uh, homeschool settings, um, you know, co-op uh, style settings is going to be difficult. The one exception to that, as long as all of the domains are whitelisted by one another, um, you should be good to go. Now, if I said that and you're like, I don't even know what that means, that's something that your um, IT director would have to do in order to um, make this uh, possible. The last thing I'll note here is there are a few school districts um, I work with uh, occasionally where the staff, uh, teachers are in one uh, G Suite domain and students are in a separate G Suite domain. Again, in that situation, you would need to create the quiz inside of the student domain or whitelist them so that the forms can talk uh, to one another. So just a couple of nuanced things. Again, if you head over to my blog post, it details out um, all these steps and what you need to do um, if any of those situations apply to you. Um, so that's, that's really it from the, um, the setup perspective. You just build your form like you normally would. Um, a couple of uh, important things that you need to know about uh, the locked quiz mode. Um, Google Classroom um, is not required. So uh, originally when this was announced, it appeared um, that it was somehow going to work directly with Google Classroom. It does work with Google Classroom, but it is not required. So you may have noticed in your own classroom um, that you have this new uh, form quiz option uh, or quiz assessment assignment in classroom. You don't have to use that in order to uh, take advantage of the locked quiz feature. You can, um, but it's not necessary. If you're a teacher who uses G Suite um, with Edmodo, Schoology, Canvas, um, or any other learning management system, you can take advantage of this feature. Google Classroom is not required, so that's cool. Um, one thing that is required, this feature will only work on Chromebooks, and that's huge. So if you are uh, using Google products with iPads, Mac, PC, you can still use Google Forms, but the locked quiz mode will not uh, be available for you. Uh, furthermore, one additional detail that you need to know, it's not just Chromebooks, they must be managed Chromebooks. So it has to be a Chromebook that was purchased by a school district and is um, managed, overseen by uh, your IT department. In most situations, 90 plus percent, um, if you have Chromebooks in your school, they are probably managed. Um, you can uh, do a quick check if you want. If you just go to your Chromebook, click the start menu or the, uh, the uh, launch icon in the bottom right corner, um, typically it will say managed by and then list your school district's name. So as long as that's the case, uh, you'll be good to go. The only time this may cause some issues is if your school has a BYOD program. So students are bringing their own device in. Even if you require them to bring a Chromebook to school, because those Chromebooks were individually purchased, um, they're not managed by the district, the locked quiz mode uh, will not work for you. So just uh, some fine points, fine details that you need to be aware of. All in all, it's a great feature. I'm excited to explore it and test it out uh, further. I would love to hear feedback from you if you are currently testing this feature. Uh, with students. Leave me a comment and let me know how it's going, uh, if you've run into any trouble or um, uh, have any problems. Um, and if you have any questions about this feature, anything that I have not covered in the video, uh, please leave me a comment. Um, I do try my best to reply to all comments that I receive here, and um, I will uh, do my best to bring it to you. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll have more later on.